Woo! Welcome. Hi. How's it going? So good to see all of you here this afternoon. My goodness. Good afternoon. Happy Sunday to every single one of y'all that are tuning in on this beautiful Sunday afternoon. You are watching the JB Show on Revolutionary Blackout Network. My apologies for the tardiness. I had, look, instead of making my usual tea, I went green, 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 smoothie. So I'm doing that today. Good to see all of you here. Just to let you guys know, the JB Show is every single Sunday at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time here on RBN. You can also catch me on my channel, on the JB Font channel, on Tuesdays at 2 and also here back on RBN, on RBN Live on th Tuesdays at 4, and on the Savvy and JB Show on Thursdays at 6. If you are liking what you're watching right now, please make sure to take that beautiful opinion you call a thumb and smash that like button. Hulk smash it. Smash it any way you want, baby. But smash it anyway, because guess what? We need to get this information out there as much as we possibly can. Now, uh, thank you to the patrons on Patreon for without you guys, we would not be able to do this. Also, anybody that sends me any type of mutual aid via various platforms, thank you so very much for that as well. Now, I was going to start this off in a more happier note, even more happier than I already am, but I also have some news to cover, some immediate news to cover that just broke. So I'll be getting to that in a second. But before I do that, I just want to give shout outs to everybody that's inside the chat. Hello to every single one of you. We're going to go down the list. We're going to see who's in there. All right. Are you ready? Are you ready? Good to see you. We have first Mark Pete Thigal saying, first thing I do, wink. I like. Thank you so much. All right. We always down for the winks and the likes, baby. All right. Angela is in here saying, greetings, all. Happy to finally be able to see a live show Sunday show and hope everyone else is having a good day. We hope you're having an excellent day, Angela. So good to see you. Eric Gray saying, sup, y'all. And at this point, calling Jamal Bowman a clown is an insult to actual <laughs> clowns. <laughs> Cheers. Mm. Oh, by the way, this is spinach, banana, pineapple. I put some hemp, chia, and flax seeds and sweeten it with a little bit of honey. And then I took black tea instead of water and I put tea in this. So I still do have my tea. There we go, baby. Cheers. Also, thanks to the SNAP benefits, a.k.a. food stamps, for allowing me to be able to have this. So this is what SNAP benefits and food stamps also gets me. Healthy smoothies that I can make myself so that I can keep myself a little bit more healthier. And yet they want to cut them. Hmm. Interesting. Anywho, let's go. Joseph is in the chat. Joseph Betts saying, the government uses honeypots to enlist men into the military. <laughs> like you said, honeypots. They're using tenderonies. Oh, my goodness. If the government really took care of its vets, why do charities like Wounded Warrior Project that help veterans exist? The government don't care at all. Very good point, Joseph. The jam on... 93 says, hey, everyone, so good to see you. Old man Barker is also in the chat saying, eh, again. <laughs> Besties, where he very says, hey, fam, hope y'all Sunday is cozier than mine. I'm on my treadmill. You know what? Whatever you're doing, look, where, wherever you are, our hearts are cozier because you're there. Just to let you know. All right. Thank you so very much. Subby subs, dooby dooby doo. Is in the chat my sister from another midst of the hostess with the mostess is inside the chat. So good to see you. Hi, Sabs. All right. 
Yep, that's what we got. Smoothies. You've been struck by a smoothie. Da -da 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 -da. Uh, let me see. Eric Grace, also a fun music duo that happened that most people weren't aware of. Michael Jackson and Carlos Santana on the song called Whatever Happens by MJ. Oh, I got to listen to that. Interesting. Cobra Commander. Cobra! This is JB, JB, JB. We want forehead kisses. We want forehead. Okay. All right. Mwah. Forehead kisses to every single one of you. I spread it all out. It's like, mwah. and I spread it to all y'all. Forehead kisses. Good to see you. Cobra Commander. All right. Let's see. Who else? Joseph Beth says celery juice is good for healthy stomach acid kidneys getting antioxidants. I just ran out of celery yesterday. I used my last stock. So I got to get more celery. By the way, people with uh, Franks and Berries, celery is also good for that health too. Just letting you know. I'm just saying, I'm just saying. All right. <laughs> Dana Fairbanks, so good to see you. Hello, peeps. So good to see you. Rick Solis is also in the chat saying, hey, y'all. <laughs> I'm so stupid. JD Informant giving a thumbs up. All right. We have Raul Johanna saying, bonjour, JB. Bonjour, Raul. So good to see you. All right. Eric Thomas, so good to see you. Odd combo. Well, I definitely am an odd combo. That's for sure, I'm sure. Jenna Kobe says, that smoothie. Yes, that smoothie. All right. Oh, you hit the gym this morning, too. Oh, Sabby. She, she be up in the gym just working on the fitness. She's my witness. Woo-hoo-wee. Sabby licious. She's kind of hot, stabby, delicious. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> what the hell is inside this smoothie? What did I put in this thing? Like, like, damn. Mm. Eric Thomas says they're cutting my stamps down about to take away that $90 extra I usually. Oh, man. Yo, they cut my food stamps in half. I was getting 60 I think it was part of it was because of the hurricane and they wanted to, I guess, increase it to be, to be more compassionate. And then as soon as they found out that we got a slight cost of living increase in my social security disability, they were like, ha, chop. And then they chopped my food stamps in half. So now I only get $30 in food stamps. Meanwhile, a dozen eggs cost like $7. I'm sorry. Uh, how, how am I supposed to live? But yeah. You and Savvy cooked Michael Eric Dyson and the lame urban media professor. Well done. Oh my God. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Jay. <laughs> All right. Who is that? You done hooked us on those forehead kisses, JB. Pitchforks are coming, says, Les Ovines Montlesiol, EC. I don't know what that means, but thank you. All right. And let me get one more. Let me get one more because I, I want to make sure I get everybody. Oh. Damn, Sabs. $9 for eggs. Capitalism is a beast and not a good beast. Mm. So let me check for the rock. Ah, we got a comment on rock fan. Let's go and make sure I share this just to make sure we can get to the comments on rock fin. Let me enlarge this just a little bit because it's a little bit on the tiny side. One, two, three. Yeah, that's good. I think people will be able to see that. We got to be accommodating here, people. A revolution will never be televised, but great booty better thighs. I never tell a lie. Um. All right. Thanks to Trick. 
Actually, you know what? Let me shrink it just one. All right. Tracy Moyer says, dooby dooby do. So good to see you, Tracy. Okay. So Roger says, Sabi, you're motivating me to get that exercise bow flex machine, but that joint is two thousand dollars. I ain't trying to go to the gym. Why go when I can wake up and jump on machine? <laughs> So, all right, one more. <laughs> Lenin fought for Ukrainian independence. Lenin said capitalism is misery without end. Very good. Now, one of the things that uh, I have to touch on really quick before I jump into the stories that are actually in the thumbnail. There was a shooting, a mass shooting last night or early this morning in Monterey, California. Um, so far it's being reported that 10 people have been died and I think at least 10 were wounded. I'm going to be going to an article about that. Um, this is in a predominantly Asian area, Asian American area. So, um, you know, we talk about a lot of times that this happens I talk about a lot of times when it happens in areas where there's, you know, like we have shootings at, you know, at the um, the club. I forgot the name of the club. I, I'm sorry, but where it's a gay club that happened, and then, you know, we talk about shootings that happen, you know, among black people, which you know is is horrible. But this one is in a predominantly Asian area, and I want to make sure I cover this as well, because, well, ah, okay, so I read this on my phone, so now it is, this seems to be behind a paywall, we have ways around that, let's see, let's get past the paywall, paste, if you guys go to archive.ph, archive.ph, any article, just about any article that has a paywall, you guys can get past. And all you do is put in a search and it shows up the article and you don't have to go past the paywall. Um, let's see, let me put it in the chat. All right, so whenever you guys need to get around a paywall, Go to archive by ph however i will say this if you have the funds and you're going on black agenda report world socialist website um if you're going to oh my god what's the name um more perfect union if you're going on websites like those then find where they get funding and how they get funding because they're free to, to watch to look at and go to either patreon or go to you know their their the area where you can donate and go donate if you have a couple extra dollars uh because these sites that you know or if somebody has like a medium article or something like that then you know for somebody like like uh chris hedges or somebody like that then if you can, you know, shoot them a couple of dollars for for its support, then do that because you know the the left, you know, independent media outlets, they typically don't have paywalls, and so just shoot them a few dollars if you can to help them to stay up and support. You know what I mean? But for these corporate outlets, go around that paywall, go to you know archive.ph, put the link in, and boom, there you go. Because, well, <laughs> they lie to us on occasion, so they're going to pay for that lie by us getting our shit for free. Anyway, but yeah, so um, I got it here. Okay, so because that's what I'm going through. A lot of people will be like, oh, you guys can't do that. Well, pff, look, the, the website exists, so we can do it. All right, so yeah, there we go. Okay, so this is out of Los Angeles Times. Says 10 people killed, 10 injured in mass shooting at Monterey Park Dance Studio. 
So it says 10 people were killed and at least 10 others were injured when a gunman opened fire at a ballroom dance studio in Monterey Park on Saturday night, which was last night. The Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department said the mass shooting, one of California's worst in memory, happened in the 100 block of West Garvey Avenue around 1022 p.m. This shooting occurred on Lunar New Year's Eve, about seven miles east of downtown Los Angeles. Uh, I think right now we just it's like the Chinese New Year. So there's that. There's scant information on the gunman. Male and still at large. There is no no motive nor a description of the shooter. A law enforcement source briefed on the matter said that the gunman used a high powered assault rifle at close range. Meyer said when officers arrived at the scene, they observed numerous individuals, patrons pouring out of the location screaming. The officers made entry into the location and located additional victims. Firefighters pronounced 10 of the victims dead at the scene. At least 10 others were taken to numerous local hospitals and their conditions range from stable to critical. Meyer said the investigators don't know whether the victims were targeted. He said it was too early to know that shooting was a hate crime. I would say that it probably is a hate crime, given that the area is predominantly Asian. I would say that it is. And you know, them saying we don't know if it's a hate crime. Eh, eh, mm, bah, mm, uh, mm. <laughs> BS. Yeah, I, I, I think I think it probably might be a hate crime. Over sixty percent Asian population. Yeah, maybe. Um, Meyer said. Oh, hang on. Oops. Meyer said he was aware of some kind of incident in the neighboring, neighboring suburb of Alhambra. Law enforcement were also on the scene Sunday afternoon in Alhambra at the Lilai Ballroom and Studio in the 100 block of South Garfield Avenue, about two miles north of Monterey Park shooting. So, yeah, so that happened early this morning, last night. There is also... Um, this tweet by an individual, um, let me see, Bobby Wellison, who also was reporting on this shooting as well. So I'm going to do this. This is going to be a very short segment, by the way, um, because... Uh, I wasn't planning on talking about this at all until I woke up this morning and I was like, I got to talk about it. So this is from Bobby Wellison it says breaking mass shooting in the Monterey Park, California, 16 plus people shot 10 plus people dead. So he's reporting 16 plus now. So he is just showing, um, Police arriving on scene. By the way, while we're at it, they always arrive after the fact. And the thing is that 16 people were shot. At least 10 people are killed dead. Um, and police arrived after the fact. My question is, where in the hell were they? Where in the hell were they? before all this happened. Aren't they supposed to serve and protect? Well, now we know that constitutionally, police actually do not have a constitutional duty to protect you. So this is why the name is law enforcement. They are to enforce the laws after they are broken instead of helping prevent crimes from being committed. This is why police are woefully ineffective. And I don't know the I don't know the financial or economic dimensions of this community, but I'm guessing to I'm willing to say that this is probably either middle to lower middle class area, 
predominantly Asian. And so they don't really have that much of an incentive to be out here posted to make sure people are still safe. So it says Monterey Park shooting to witness the LA Times shooter was carrying a long gun and appeared to fire indiscriminately. So this is the aftermath of the shooting that has happened. And so I, I just got to say that my heart goes out to everyone who this has happened to. Um, look, we talk about the police here a lot on RBN. I talk about it a lot. Uh, I know Nick talks about it a lot. And no matter who it happens to, I don't care if it's to a bunch of white people in Appalachia, right? It is something that should never happen in this country. We literally haven't, you know, we talk about, you know, shootings that happen like this, hate crimes, mass shootings. And I think one of the angles that we should go by is number one, what type of system do we have that makes people act this way? Let's get to the underlying cause of why people behave in this manner. And some people would say, oh, it's just a hate crime. And it's like, well, why do people hate? What information are they being fed? What propaganda are they being fed? in order to develop that hate within their hearts because no one's born inherently hateful could it be the system that we have that also contributes to that hate if we were to change the system to make it more egalitarian equal and equitable then the means or the reason to hate others would go down significantly I'm not saying it's going to be perfect. That's not what me I say. That's not what socialists say. That's not what communists say. That's not what Marxists say. It's not going to be perfect. Absolutely not. But can it be a lot better? Can people be a lot safer? And please do not tell me that, oh, this is why we need the police. Because the people are dead already. They're dead. So what have the police actually done? Oh, they're going to find and catch the shooter? I can get a bunch of people in the neighborhood to go and find the guy. Get a bunch of people in the neighborhood, arm them up, and go find him. Get a couple witnesses to come with us and be like, hey, yo, that's the guy. Yeah, okay, cool. Boom. Here's the thing. What has our system led to in order for this to happen? That's something that we need to talk about. And the thing is that if we change the system, then we can actually make people's lives safer. And part of the reason why our lives, people commit crimes like this, is crimes of poverty and lack of opportunity. And then on top of that, you also have a vilifying of people as other. And so guess what? Then you'll have some people that will take that into their own hands and eliminate the lives of other people because they were propagandized to think that that other is a danger to the society or a danger to them, when in reality, they're not. And so that's what we need to talk about. That's what needs to be addressed because people saying that, oh, this person just had a mental illness and it's like, what if this person isn't really that mentally ill? What if they're just propagandized deeply? Most mentally ill people don't commit violence like this. People who suffer from mental illness typically are trying not to hurt anybody. In fact, they're the ones that get hurt more. And then on top of it, 
Couldn't it be somebody that has difficulties in their lives? And they're told to blame people who have really nothing to do with their lot in life. So, yeah, my heart goes out to everyone in the Asian diaspora. You know, as an African-American, I stand with you. And I, I'm very sorry about this happening. You know, solidarity with you guys as well. So, yeah. I'm going to move on and get to my stories that I was about to get on. But first, let me go to the couple of super chats. Thank you to James for the super sticker. Thank you so very much. Appreciate it so much. Juan Benincourt says, indeed, we need to talk and continually highlight the effects of propaganda and its link with the heinous acts. Thank you so much, Juan. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. <sighs> now, to our primary story, one of our primary stories. Jamal Bowman, he got the nerve. Jamal Bowman got the baby, he got the nerve. Hmm. Wait, made this before bed. I'm going to show y'all what Jamal Bowman said. Y'all know he got a TikTok, right? Y'all know he got a TikTok. Let's go. Let's, let's go to Jamal's TikTok. Let's take a look, see at what he said. Because somebody tagged me in TikTok and they were like, JB, you guys should talk about this. I'm like, oh, okay, I guess. Okay. Because I'm just like, what? Y'all about to see? Hang on. What did he say? Okay. Okay. Let me share my screen real quick. I see what you said, Joseph. <laughs> All right, let's listen to him. He says, Madam Speaker, and let's continue. Oh, Lord. And this is on his TikTok, by the way. The rent is too damn high. The rent is too damn high. We have people across the country struggling to keep a roof over their heads. We are the wealthiest nation in the history of the world outside of ancient African civilizations. Yet we cannot provide housing for every single person in our country. We have CEOs making record profits. We have corporations making rep record profits. We have corporate landlords suppressing and oppressing and evicting tenants without just cause while continuing to raise the rent. We call on President Biden to take executive action on this issue. We do not have a healthy democracy or a healthy society unless we take care of our tenants and our working class people who are working 40, 50, 60, 70 hours a week just to survive. Someone's time expired. Thank you and I yield back. Okay. What the hell? 
that wasn't supposed to happen. They don't give me enough time. Anyway, we're going to break this down real quick. So we're going to break this down real quick. All right. So why do I say Jamal Bowman got the nerve? Let's break it down. Let's go. All right. He says, the rent is too damn high. He said, the rent is too damn high. Now, that was from a mayoral candidate a few years ago. Some of y'all from New York, y'all may know. Homeboy with the funky beard uh, and the mutton chops. And he said, the rent is too damn high. And they're right. He's right. That point is correct. So what is Jamal doing about it besides this? Let, 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 let's continue. All right. Let, 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 let's continue. The rent is too damn we high. We have people across the country struggling to keep a roof over no their sure heads. Sherlock. We are the wealthiest nation in the history of the no world doubt. outside of ancient African civilizations. True. Yet we cannot provide housing for every single person in our country. Yeah. We have CEOs making record profits. We have corporate which also contribute to your Democratic colleagues, which contribute to the leader of the Democratic caucus in the House and to your former Speaker Nancy Pelosi. Keep going. Corporations making rep record okay. profits. We have corporate landlords suppressing and oppressing and evicting tenants without just cause while continuing to raise the rent. This is when I say Jamal Bowman got the nerve. Why do I say that? You ready? Y'all ready for this? Okay. All right. So there's a little site that I like to use from time to time. I know Savvy knows exactly what I'm talking about. Savvy, you know, you know what's coming, Sabs. All right. It's called Open Secrets, right? And we're looking at Jamal Bowman, right? Now, he just said that these landlords and real estate companies are making it more tougher for people by raising their rents and things like that. So let's, say, let's, let's look at who he gets his money from, right? Contributions from 2021 2022 amount to $963,351, right? Now, a lot of people will say, well, you know, it's from... You know, he doesn't get money from super PACs. He doesn't get money from corporations, blah, blah, blah. And people will be like, oh, yeah, sure. That's fine. He's legit. A lot of people assume so. Now, let's go down the list. Well, number one is J Street. Well, <laughs> isn't that a... interesting? Um. Doesn't Jamal Bowman, does Jamal Bowman give any support to Palestinian people? Does he support BDS? Well, that's a whole nother story. But American Federation teachers, sounds legit. City of New York, City University of New York, so you got it from a school. And this, in, in this, you have total individuals and packs, right? Actually, let me make sure this is enlarged. Is this enlarged? No. You have total individual impacts we're going to be paying most of the attention to packs okay so american federation of teachers okay see in new york that was from individuals city of new york new york 
individuals. Okay, University of Maryland, individuals. American Federation of School Administrators, some individuals, and also PACs. Okay, Arison Networks, some individuals. Justice Democrats, who are problematic in themselves because they take corporate money. Mostly PACs. <clears throat> Congressional Black Caucus, he got money from them. AmeriPAC, the Fund for Greater America. University of California, he also got. Akondi Foundation, he also got money from that. Uh, let me see, Morningside translations. But what I want to focus on is number 18. The National Association of Realtors. And it wasn't through individuals. It was through a pack. Now, as far as the National Association of Filters, when you go here, let's go to National Association of Realtors because we're talking about rent properties, right? Well, why would the National Association of Realtors give Jamal Bowman money? Do they just give money to people who are actually trying to, you know, make housing more affordable and for instance things like rent controls making sure that the rent isn't too damn high for many of us is that the point because guess what we know that the democrats are supposed to be for the people so then the republicans will be on the opposite side right right but look at that! Look at that! Right? What's that? What's that? What's that say? To candidates, congressional candidates, party of recipients. Oh, that's that's almost divided half and half, right? Fifty point two five percent of all the recipients for contributions from the National Association of Realtors goes to Democrats, while forty nine point seven four percent. Go to Republicans. Well, what do you know? Interesting. They're literally giving money to both sides. Hmm. Makes you interesting, right? 89.37% are incumbents. They gave $3,373,605. Let me make sure this is a little bit larger so that everybody can see a little bit better. So y'all can see it in 4K. All right. Yeah. House recipients, Democrats, number of members, 210. Average contribution, 8,131. How much did Jamal Gwoman get? He got 7,000. Total contributions, $1,707,650. Republicans, 202 members. Average contribution, $7,877. Average so total contributions, $1,591,311. All parties, $3.29 million. Hmm. Senate. 19 Democratic members, 6,814. Republicans, 23 members, 6,340 average contribution. So it's pretty equal. Does not make you question? Now, a lot of people will say, well, well, what's the point, JB? Right? So what? They are, they're, they're for, you know, they're for doing all these good things for people, right? Like, for instance, uh, let's go here. They just want to help people with housing. That's all. Like, for instance, here on OC Today, Ocean City Today, says 
National Association of Realtors addresses Biden's plans for taking on housing crisis. And it says the National Association of Realtors issued a press release stating that the Biden administration recently announced new steps to tackle the housing supply crisis. <coughs> Bullshit. The plan by the U.S. Department of Treasury allows the use of $350 billion in American Rescue Plan funds by state, local, and tribal governments towards the development, repair, and operation of affordable housing units. The following is a statement from the National Association of Realtors President Leslie Ruta Smith. The top issue around the country among our 1.5 million members is housing supply. NAR commends the White House for addressing this challenge head on and working across agencies on a comprehensive plan to provide the necessary flexibility for state and local governments. Any effort to add supply will help alleviate historic shortage in affordable housing. NAR commissioned a landmark research report last year showing a lack of 5.5 million homes in the U.S., a gap so large it would take more than a decade to dig out of, even with accelerated new construction. It is nothing short of affordability crisis hurting first-time, first-generation, and middle-income Americans most. NAR supports comprehensive action that includes investment in new construction, zoning reforms, expansion of financing, and tax incentives to spur investment in housing convert unused commercial space to residential. So that's basically what they say, right? <laughs> Mm, uh, uh, let's go. Mm -hmm. Well, let's go to their site, the National Association of Realtors, right? Legislative advocacy. First one on the list is Chicago Association of Realtors, which is an affiliate of the National Association of Realtors, by the way. Commercial form, commercial structure. What? Blocking a high-rise fire sprinkling mandate. Ha! Ha! ha. Blocking a high-rise fire sprinkler mandate. Is it successful? Program was a success. The overreach of the state fire marshal was heavily rebuked by the public and media. Is it affordable? Costs were st Costs were staff time only. Commercial Forum worked closely with the Illinois Association of Realtors to coordinate grassroots in Chicago and the region. Is it sustainable? This issue brought together commercial members to achieve a common goal. The coalition that resulted is expected to remain impact as this issue resurfaces. Is it replicable in other associations? Yes. So... They blocked a high-rise fire sprinkler mandate. I mean, I thought people's lives were the most important. Why, why block a mandate for fire sprinklers? Does this have to do with trying to cut costs so that you guys can build more? By the way, there are millions of empty homes in the United States, and there are people in the streets amounts of over 500,000. So we literally, all we have to do is just put people in those houses. We really don't need to actually build more housing. The housing already actually exists. Yeah. It is not an issue of scarcity. Scarcity is actually a myth. We got a lot of empty houses. So when people talk about, oh, we need to build more affordable housing, actually, we don't. We just need to put people in the housing that already exists. But they don't want you to do that because they want to keep that for themselves to make more money off that housing. That's what it is. And they want to keep the pores in those areas. They don't want to, they don't want no intermingling. You know what I'm saying? That's what it is. Let's continue. Let's enlarge it. All right, all right, folks. 
Oklahoma Association of Realtors commercial structure. What square footage bill passed a bill that prevents realtors from lawsuits over misrepresentation of square footage. Passed same bill for commercial properties. Passed a bill that prevents realtors from lawsuits over misrepresented of square footage. So they can't be sued if they lie. I'm sorry, but if you lie about the square footage, you should be punished for that. <laughs> you should, somebody should get some recompense for you lying about square footage. Why block that? Is it successful? Yes, the bill passed. Is it affordable? Cost is staff time. Is it sustainable? The effort was the product of a collaborative legislative push and can be done again. Is it replicable in other associations? Yes. Sarasota, not too far from me, Association of Realtors. What? Say no on Amendment 4, a statewide effort to defeat amendment that required voter approval for every change in a comprehensive plan in the cities and counties. So people could actually have a say in approval for what changes in city planning. But they want a no on that. Program was, is it success? The initiative failed resoundingly 6832. Is it affordable? Costs were considerable. Nearly $4 million spent by realtors as a part of a larger coalition. Is it sustainable? The issue brought together commercial members to achieve a common goal. The coalition that resulted is expected to remain intact as the issue resurfaces. Is it a replicable in other associations? Yes. That's the National Association of Realtors. But Jamal Bowman said that the rent is too damn high. Now, I got something else for you. Let's let's just let's just go back to what he said. What 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 did Jamal say? Hmm. What what did he say? We call, we have CEOs making record profits. We have corporations making rep record profits. We have corporate landlords suppressing and oppressing and evicting tenants without just cause while continuing to raise the rent. Okay, I want you to keep that in mind. And now I'm going to share my screen really quick. All right. Because he just said that while getting money from the National Association of Realtors, right? Let's go. Oh, our friends at More Perfect Union. So good to see them. What does this say? It says realtors lobby plows political cash, plows political cash into efforts to keep its rents higher. Well, 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 what do you know? It says the National Association of Realtors is fighting an array of attempts to provide relief to renters despite America's deepening housing crisis. Hmm, that $7,000 seems a little tasty, huh? The rent is too damn high. Wages are too damn low. Well, this came out in November of last year, just a couple months ago. All right, this is by Donald Stahl and David Moore. Thank you so very much. It says the <clears throat> pandemic and widespread job loss put the squeeze on renters, many of whom were already facing a burden of housing crisis. 
almost half of renters in 2020 met the federal definition of cost burden, meaning they spent at least 30% of their income on housing, according to data from the U.S. Census Bureau. For nearly a quarter of renters, at least half of their income went to rent checks. I'm part of that quarter. Over half of my, over half of my household actually goes towards rent. I say probably about 60% of my household income goes towards rent. So yeah. Shelter cost inflation began rising in early 2021 and has increased roughly 5% since then, putting major economic pressure on many Americans along with rapidly, rapidly inflating prices in food, gasoline, and consumer goods. Rent inflation remained rapid in the latest consumer price index data, increasing at more than double the typical year rate. And shelter costs have recently been pegged as the single largest factor driving core inflation up. Overall, in housing costs, it is a return to the record highs of the 1980s. There are many factors affecting housing prices, supply chain issues, remote workers fleeing cities during the pandemic lockdowns, and years of very low mortgage interest rates that help fuel a buying frenzy. Another factor making the housing more expensive and predatory for many is a massive real estate industry trade group that spends millions of dollars each year to lobbying governments in the U.S. While the National Association of Realtors and its state affiliates are most known for their advocacy for homeowners' tax advantages, it also sides with landlords and real estate investors on a myriad of policy debates that make housing more expensive and less stable for renters. Opposition to rent control laws. NAR is strongly against rent control laws. Writing on its, it, on its issue tracking website, the social responsibility of providing affordable housing should not be disproportionately borne by private property owners. And that rent control and rent stabilization put unreasonable costs and burdens upon property owners without compensation. <laughs> and AR says on this website that earlier this year it helped to draft and pass a law in Ohio substitute House Bill 430 that includes a provision preempting local governments in Ohio from capping rents. By the way, the Ohio Association of Realtors, the NAR affiliate, has donated at least $430,000 to DeWine, according to Open Secrets. Oh, let me get this one. Here's where I live. <clears throat> in Orange County, Florida, where I live, the Florida Association of Realtors and NAR affiliate filed a motion for a temporary injunction over the summer long, uh, summer along with the Florida Apartment Association to block a rent stabilization ordinance from appearing on the November ballot in September. The group's motion was denied by a judge and the measure is on the ballot, though the Realtors Association continued its legal fight and last week an appeals court judge ruled that the measure should not have been put on the ballot. The NAR and its Florida affiliates have formed a pact called the Realtors Issues Mobilization Committee that has begun sending mailers against the measure that feature images of handcuffs and warned that landlords who violate the ordinance could be jailed. Ooh. The group received more than $1.3 million from NAR in October and nearly as much from Florida realtors since April of this year, according to records from the Florida Department of State. Where I live, says rents in Orlando, and I know this personally, of part of Orange County increased by 27% from the second quarter of 2021 through the second quarter of 2022. The second highest increase in any city in the country over that period. This is why, this is why here on RBN, I had to have a fundraiser for me in order to be able to make my rent. 
This is why, and part of that blame goes to the National Association of Renters, I'm sorry, of Realtors, that decided that they didn't want the rent to go down. They wanted to be too damn high. So people like myself who are disabled that literally have to fundraise in order to afford where I live, well, guess what? They decided to raise the rent. And guess what? I actually have to depend on the kindness of others in order to survive. So you see why this is a problem? And I haven't even gotten deep into the article yet. I have not. There's more. There's more. And Jamal Bowman has the nerve, the nerve to say, the rent's too damn high. Well, maybe if you didn't take money from the people that are helping to make the rent high, then maybe we wouldn't be in this mess. Maybe, just maybe, you weren't in a party that was pro-capitalist, that was pro-property manager, or not property manager, that was pro-real estate investor, that was pro-landlord then maybe, just maybe, you can actually fight against them. Maybe if you were like Shama Sawant, maybe, just maybe, you can actually fight against them in order to make it so that people's rent wouldn't be too damn high. Maybe, just maybe, you can call out every single politician within your party who receives money from the National Association of Realtors if you didn't get the money from them. And you can call them out and say, look, Guess what? These are all the politicians that take it. You can call out all the Democrats and all the Republicans, and then you can be that bull in a china shop. You can actually do what the Justice Democrats thought that they were going to do. But you didn't. Because you took money from the National Association of Realtors. Who are working to make it so that our rents don't go down so that we don't have something affordable so that we can survive. Because you, in practice, don't really feel that housing is all right. Opposition to a federal renter bill of rights. At the end of May, the White House convened what called a housing provider listing, listing session to discuss with industry stakeholders, how a coordinated national policy could tackle the housing affordability crisis. During this campaign, President Biden called for a new homeowner and percent renter bill of rights model after a set of California laws that would expand renters protections from abusive landlords and lenders. Other measures Biden proposed as a candidate would facilitate legal assistance for renters of facing evictions, enhance accountability measures for financial institutions over discriminatory housing practices, and reverse the Trump administration's rollback of an Obama rule requiring communities that receive some federal housing funds to identify and address policies to have discriminatory practices. The day after the listening session, the National Association of Realtors who gives money to Jamal Bowman and other real estate and mortgage industry groups were ready with a letter that they sent to President Biden and the administration officials opposing the idea of a federal renter's bill of rights. The letter argues that such measures at the federal level would, quote, create unnecessary duplication of renter protections that are already required by and disclosed in landlord-tenant eviction and fair housing laws, end quote. Instead, to address affordability challenges, they suggested increasing the supply of affordable housing units and incentivizing voluntary participation in federal housing programs. They're basically saying individual responsibility instead of community responsibility. That's basically what it is. It's individualism. Closing C-19 eviction moratoriums. Support replacing 30-day eviction rule. This is very heinous. 
the National Association of Renters, who gave $7,000 to Jamal Bowman, I'm going to keep saying that, is supporting a bill that would introduce in the House of Representatives by September by Georgia Republican Barry Loudermilk and other House Republicans that would overturn the CARES Act provision that requires all landlords nationally to provide a 30-day notice before they began eviction proceedings. The 30-day federal notice requirement is longer than what is required by many states, which Loudermilk says on his website is just eight days on average. The bill's backers say that the 30-day national requirement was supposed to be temporary, but then was made permanent in the CARES Act due to a drafting error. This technical error in the language of the CARES Act takes away the power of states, localities, and the judicial system to control eviction policies and procedures and adds confusing ambiguity to the process. The NAR, the National Association of Realtors, wrote in a letter thanking Loudermilk and other Republican co-sponsors for proposing the bill. The real estate industry has been one of Loudermilk's top donors over the course of his career, providing him with more than $250,000 in campaign funding, according to Open Secrets. Of that sum, National Association Realtors PAC accounts for $43,000, which whom they also gave $7,000 to Jamal Bowman, who says the rent is too damn high. Support for suspending the FHA's anti-flipping rule. Pushing back against desperate impact rules. A lobbying giant legislation touching on realtors group issues face a gauntlet of lobbyists on capitol hill for the past several years the national association of realtors has been one of the top highest spending groups on federal lobbying who gave seven thousand dollars to jamal bowman who says the rent is too damn high in the first three quarters of 2022 the national association of realtors spent 56.2 million dollars on home on site on lobbying, according to the records from the Senate, it was the second highest spending lobbying group over that period behind the behemoth U.S. Chamber of Commerce. Through the first three quarters of the year, the National Association of Realtors Federal Lobbying has surpassed the $44 million it spent in 2022, sorry, 2021. The top recipients funds donated through the vote the same in the 2022 cycle. National Republican Congressional Committee is $277,500. They gave Tim Scott $263,000, $209. Marco Rubio got $199,786. Senator John Thune got $177,500. And the National Republican Senatorial Committee got $170,500. Joe Manchin got $160,765. Representative Van Taylor got $153,575. Catherine Cortez Masto got $443,000. Peter Stauber got $133,025. Jerry Moran got $133,000. On sit, who sits on the Banking, Housing, and Urban Affairs Committee. The rent is too damn high. You're goddamn right, but it's no thanks to you. The rent's too damn high! You complain about the problem that you're helping contribute to. Man, Mao was right. I'm going to go to the chat real quick. Because <laughs> we got some things to talk about in the chat, people. All right, let me go to Rockfin really quick first, and then I'll go to the rest of the chat in here. All right, so Rory O'Neill, so good to see you, Rory. 
All right, Roger. Thank you for the tip on Rockfin. Roger says, "My bad, Jay. I never put you up on game when it came to the, what industry are the biggest donors to New York politicians. It's not healthcare, nor Amazon, or Wall Street, but R E uh, R E B N Y, the real estate brokers of New York. Huh. Governor Joe Cool, I like that." Governor Joe Cool is going to war with GOP out here on Long Island suburbs to override home rules to force the building of new housing out here. Sounds good on the surface, right? And the homelessness crisis. In the home, uh, sorry, in the homelessness crisis, built more homes, but this is just a scheme to cause more havoc, gentrification in communities to line the pockets of R E B N Y. They want to turn the suburbs into a metropolitan area, knowing there is no infrastructure for building big buildings out here like that. Public banks, public banks, public banks are good for not building more homes, seeing that North Dakota is the first, I'm sorry, is the 51st in amount of homeless per capita, but they also tamp down on speculation. It is January, people, a new legislative term. We got 18 months to get these initiatives on the ballot. Where are the ballot initiative amendments that would charter public banks and outlaw private equity from owning housing? Time is ticking, people. The time to act is now. I'm saying it like New Jersey, now. Exactly. Why should we push CBIs as amendments, not laws? That creates state version of Social Security to fill the gap between what you get from the federal and what your cost of living is. Matter of fact, you can even have it say, I just don't want it to fill the gap that I want my cup to run over. So you have to, so you have a buffer left over to cushion you. You have it kicking at 60, but you need public banks to build the surplus to fund it. Okay. Thank you so much. I hope everybody listens to whenever I, when Roger actually talks, because he talks about some base things, by the way. Let's go to the chat. Neuropsych says, have to rent any other half for if you happen to have health insurance. Yep. Meanwhile, I got Medicare and they're trying to cut that. Cantorell says, if I didn't have rent control by my landlords themselves, I'd be homeless by now. Wow. So sorry to hear that. We should have it nationally. That's that's the least of what we should have. John Kaya says, I'm glad to be out of paying rent. <laughs> Creative experience. Poor landlord, so oppressed. Yeah. My thing is, it's like, okay, so you had the capital in order to be able to buy a home, and so now you're making other people live in it well not making other people but you're, but other people who actually need a home you're having them live in there in order to pay your mortgage but then they don't own the home or let's say you paid it off but now because you own that property now they're paying you for profit and you're just making profit off of people but they don't get to have ownership of the property that they've been paying on. Is that really this? Like, okay. I've been paying my rent. I've been renting since I was 18. I moved out when I was 18. I, I moved out by choice, but gosh, by the way, put in the chat, the amount your first apartment was 
because I miss my number one, I miss my first apartment. Number two, I miss the rent that it was. My first apartment was a studio, right? It had a kitchen, small kitchen. It had a uh, dining area, and it had the basically the room, which is bedroom slash living room, right? But then I also and I had my bathroom, and you know, and even in my kitchen, I had a a, a stove and an oven. It was the the, the stove was literally this wide, and the stove and oven was literally this wide. Right. It wasn't super wide. Like it was like three quarters of the size of a typical stove and oven. It was three quarters the width. But anyway, it worked perfectly. And I had myself a stove, an oven. Uh, I had a normal size fridge. I had, you know, all things that I needed in my house. Right. The only thing I didn't have was wash and dryer hookup. I had to go to down to the lodging mat in order to wash my clothes. But that goes without saying. But anyways, it was, you know, just, you know, uh, a you know, just a block to walk. But having that, my rent was four fifty five a month. What was yours in your first place? Put that in the chat. Anyway, congrats, John. Less than nine years, I'll be done with mortgage payments. Yeah, I, I, you know, I don't have, I don't have the money. And I don't have the credit. So I'm screwed. Hell, my mom's 71 and she's never owned her own home. Right? Janice Anderson says, as a property owner myself, I have to strongly disagree with the National Association of Realtors and all its affiliates. Rent control measures and affordable housing must stake absolutely make absolutely no impact on an individual homeowner. Thank you for that, Janice. Appreciate it. Says child of God says, imagine if everyone left and moved to a more affordable country, these organizations would immediately go out of business. That's true. Just we can't afford it, but that's true. Angela says we have to be there to help each other because no one in power wants to take the time to do it. Whether it had been that way or not, doesn't matter now. We've, we're we all we got. Thank you so much, Angela. Tracy says the U.S. was founded to get away from the kings and lords, but somehow we kept the lords for our housing, kept the kings in our employment, bosses at work. Absolutely. Thank you so very much. Cattrell says renters always have to give their credit and past living history. Always get the landlord's info history if they are private individual property owners. That's a good tip. Lenin Froth for Ukrainian Independence says we need a revolution to redistribute property and land that was taken. That's what it's taken every socialist revolution from Russia to Cuba to Yugoslavia. Thank you so much. Upstate Raider says ambiguity that slows the eviction process is life saving. Arif says Liberia. <laughs> Good to see you, Larry. Arif. Let me see. Cazarel says BlackRock owns so many corporate and individual home properties right now. It's money crimes. Yeah. Steve Adeptus. Y'all need some chickens. <laughs> you know what? If I own my own home, I would like some chickens, but I don't own my own home, so I can't have them. What am I going to do? <laughs> I can't build a coop. You know what I'm saying? I don't own my own home. People who own their own homes can probably build a chicken coop and have chickens. So what, what about renters? Sorry, but <laughs> I agree. I mean, that could probably help people out. You know, we could probably, you know, have get our own eggs, but yeah. 
Eric Gray, good to see you, Eric. He says, I teach a math and financial literacy class. And yeah, thanks for giving me more material for my students. Ooh. I would actually like to be part of that class, Eric, because I we need some uh we need some financial literacy. See, some cities ban chickens, but are fine with people, but people keeping tigers. <laughs> That's also true. Yep. Red, $150 a month? When when is this red? What year? Because, wait, when I moved out on my own, my rent was $455 a month. I was living in the studio. Hang on, that was 2002. Yeah, I moved out in 2002. So 21 years ago. When I when I moved out and got on my own, but yeah, Lavender says ninety nine dollars a month studio. <gasps> when? That is amazing. Roger Meadow says yes, Jay. That's the hustle. Yeah, Child of God seven seven hundred. Damn. How old are you, Child of God? You must be young. <laughs> oh, okay. You say you're half joking. Luckily, in less West Country, you can have chicken in most towns and cities. That's yeah. Honestly, I'd be heavily considering if I own my own home. If you all actually own your own home, you might want to consider getting chickens. Like for real, for real. Like consider it. Heavily consider getting chickens. Get some eggs from a local chicken farmer or get some chicks that are, you know, that have been taken care of and then grow them to be chickens. And then they start, you know, and get a rooster, get a couple hens. Boom. I had the second floor of an attic of Victorian Manium. Oh, OK. Angela says $135 a month for two rooms and a bath. That was in 86? Nice. Eric Gray says, my first actual apartment in 2021, my rent was $625 a month in Florida. $625? Was it a studio? Please, tell me. I'm... I'm, I'm <clears throat> Leroy Jenkins says, farmhouse, no running water, 75 a month. Oh, no running water. <laughs> but yeah, $75 a month. Wow. Jenna says, 1990 Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, huge three bedroom with amazing view, 450. Wow. Dana Fairbanks says, $400 for the studio. Oh, early 80s. Oh, okay. Bryson says 679. John Chaos says second floor of an attic Victorian mansion for 375 a month, split with two roomies was my best rental. One bedroom Philly, $700. My family's in Philly. My family's actually in West Philly. Dan's fan says, Will y'all sign up for Air Force in exchange for some Punami? Oh. <laughs> That must be for my second story. I haven't gotten to that yet. Can't say, can't afford to leave. We're all in a domestic abuse relationship with the system. Oh, I'm sorry. Wow. Lavender Rose says, 1970s, the rule was $100 per bedroom for decades when the Clintons started dismantling everything WPA and the labor movement achieved. I wish it was just $100 per bedroom because then mine would be my rent would be around 500 bucks. That would be wonderful. I wish I could pay the rent that I had. Um, I wish I could pay the rent that I had when I first moved. 
I can pay that right now. Also, by the way, from what I found out, was it Cuba or China? You only pay 10% of your income on rent. I think it's China. Yeah, you only pay 10% of your income on, or it might be both, 10% of your income. So if you make $2,000 a month, you're only paying $200. If you make $5,000 a month, you're only paying 500 bucks. <laughs> That'd be crazy. Why the hell are we sticking with a capitalist system? I wonder. Colin! Good to see you. I said $500 for my share in a three-bedroom apartment back in 2003. Wow. Wow. Man. Woo. Man, I'm telling you. Yeah. Anyway. So, yeah. When somebody says that the rent is too damn high and then they're... See, here's the problem. What a lot of these politicians will do. They will accurately diagnose the problem, but when it comes to actually saying what the solution should be, they stand in the way of the actual solution. That's like standing in front of a car and going, man, this car really needs to get a block down the road, but you're standing in front of the car and you're not allowing it to go forward. If you move your ass to the left or move your ass to the right and then let the car move forward, then you wouldn't be standing in the way so that you can actually diagnose the problem and you can be out the way so the solution can actually happen. But you don't do it. Why? Because you decided to take $7,000 from the National Association of Realtors. Democrats, what can you say? Democrat, Republican, Wonder Twins, activate. So, yeah. Now, I don't want to go over time. So, I'm going to go to the next story. But, interesting, right? Now, Yeah, <laughs> Jennifer said, <laughs> amazing, $7,000 is all that's needed to sell out, right? Jeez Louise, man. Anyway, now, to the next story. Sex sells. It sells. What can we say? Let's go to an article, shall we? Shall we? Let's go to the article. This is out of Dazed, not to be confused with Dazed and Confused, but... This says how e-girl influencers are trying to get Gen Z into the military. Cosplay commandos are posting nationalist thirst traps to mobilize the simps. But why? I'm not the American dream. I'm more like an American nightmare. Beams the influencer known as Helusion in a video to her 363,000 TikTok followers. With full face e girl makeup, drawn on freckles, and a rosy nose, the 20 year old is the face of an unsettling new breed of e girl, garnering millions of views online. She posts thirst traps inside choppers and pouty selfies with assault rifles with hashtags like pew pew and military curves. She shares cutesy unboxing compilations and makeup tutorials. 
Get me ready with the meme videos and lip syncs. She jokes about war bunkers and plays with remote control tanks which she overlays with sparkly filters and heart emojis. Known in some esoteric meme circles as the Psyop Girl, Hey Lujan, also simply known as Lujan, is a self-described psychological operations specialist for the U.S. Army whose online presence has led to countless memes speculating that she is a post-ironic psyop meant to recruit people into U.S. Army. Lewan, who is actually employed by the U.S. Army PSYOPs Division, posts countless TikToks and memes that play into this. Her official website is called PSYCOPS. My own taxes used to psy my own taxes used to sign up me, says one commenter. Definitely a Fed. I'm signed up for the army now, writes another commenter. But Heluyan isn't the only e-girl using scenario sex appeal to lure in the internet simps into the armed forces. There's Bailey Crespo and Kayla Salinas, not to mention countless mill talk gun influencers cropping up online. While she didn't document her military career, influencer Bella Porch also served in the U.S. Navy for four years before going viral on TikTok in 2020. And it's arguably the blueprint for this kind of kawaii commodified fetishism in the military. An adjacent figure, Natalia Fadiv, also known as Gun Waifu, is an Israeli influencer and IDF soldier who uses waifu aesthetics and cat girl cosplay to peddle pro-Israel propaganda to her 756,000 followers. She poses to camera a Hegel style with freshly manicured nails wrapped neatly around a Glock. The uwu infinication of military functioning as a cutesy distraction from the shadowy colonial context. When they try to destroy your nation, she writes in one caption. We've entered an era of military funded e-girl warfare. And what would have felt unimaginable only a few years back, influencers are now the hottest new weapon in the government's arsenal. Here, cosplay commandos post nationalist thirst traps to mobilize the simps, attracting the sort of impressionable reply guys in 4chan's Lost Boys who message, oh my God, DM me fire on every post, sanitizing the harsh realities of U.S. imperialism with cute e-girlisms. It promises, I'm sorry, it promotes the sort of hypersexualized militarism that refrains, re reframes violence as something cute, goofy, and unthreatening, a subversion to the beefy special forces stereotypes in the mainstream, arguably far more unsettling than the 20th century CIA covert ops there is no hush-hush to this operation. Rather, it hides in plain sight, capitalizing on online irony to lull you into a false sense of security with relatable content and the sort of tapped-in memory, memory that can only come from years of being terminally online. She's just like me, for real. Don't go to college. Become a farmer. Or form or soldier instead, Luan urges her audience in recent TikTok before going into anti-liberal rant about the metaverse and impossible burgers. Realistically, it's not the US Army that actively funneling the trade ideology via 20-year-old influencer posting hot girl content as a soldier online benefits Luan's personal brand too. But when you consider how estimate rates among Gen Z have plummeted, unofficial pro-military content like Luan's undeniably plays into U.S. Army's motives. See, when the Army spends $100 million on advertisement each year just to get ratio by a 21-year-old girl on TikTok. So, they're literally Let me show you. All right, so wait. Oh, let me hold on. Sorry. Let me. Okay. Let me show you guys the actual video. 
because this is what we're talking about. That I have some Army Girl hacks for semi-permanent makeup or at least makeup that lasts a few days. Very helpful for when you're in the field or if you're just at home and don't feel like doing it every day, I don't know. Semi-permanent brow ink by Revlon in the shape warm brown. Shake that shit up, shake it up, shake it up. Here's the before, just looking, you know, average Joe. But then I take it onto my lips and start doing lip liner and just smudge it out. I do this around the whole perimeter of my lips, but then I shade in kind of the edges a little bit more to give that dimension, you know what I mean? That dimension, that little... But I also use this on my brows. I use it as eyeliner sometimes, add more freckles sometimes, and it lasts three days even if you use a makeup wipe. So very helpful, especially because I don't like to reapply makeup in front of the male soldiers. feel like they won't take you seriously. But with that being said, to any of my military girls out there, don't let them turn you into a robot. You can be a soldier while being whoever it is that you were before. So get creative in finding convenient ways to express yourself. Hope this helps. What was, what did she say? Um, oh, if men can find out we can rearrange the bedrooms of our face, they're going to tell the church. <sighs> yeah, Mark. What the actual, actual. Oh, there's more. There's more, bro. There's more. Um, this is what they're doing. It's crazy. But this is what they're doing. All right. Let me share. <laughs> desperate. Oh, this is desperate. Okay. All right. Thirsty Miller, baby. So this is from Zay Squirrel. Great account. I recommend you guys follow. Since the U.S. military is struggling with a shortage of new recruits and is using sexualized social media propaganda to lure young men into singing, signing their away their lives. Let's let. Oh gosh, let's watch. <laughs> it is so stupid. Hey, don't fall for the sign up, brothers. If it was the best field job you've ever had in your You're seeing is advanced warfare. The U.S. government is engaged in a large number of secret medical experiments developing techniques for mind control to create a so-called Manchurian state. What is the extent of these brainwashing experiments? How did the CIA become involved in such far-reaching and disturbing research? Look on long hair star, star. thick and hip. Propaganda. Wake the fuck up. Wake the Propaganda. fuck up. We go, Jim. Mm -mm. Nope. Not your war. Not your monkeys. Not your circus. Hey, don't fall. Like he said, not your war. Not your monkeys. Not your circus. Those of you who love cis women in the female form, y'all need to wake up because guess what? They're luring you to death. There are plenty of. Look, I'm going to tell you right now. There are plenty of hot girls on the left who are anti-war. You don't need to go that point, the, the, the path of death. Trust and believe, all right? <laughs> We're going to the path of life, not to the path of death. Guys, think with your head and not with your head. Yes, from clickbait to death bait. Yes, leading the bull to the slaughter. Zay Squirrel continues, says, for those unfamiliar with the term barracks bunny, it refers to women and army barracks who sleep with the men. 
the U.S. Army is using fake sexual fantasy as part of its recruitment propaganda to get young men to destroy their lives for them. And remind you that this headline says the U.S. Army is struggling to find the recruits it needs to win the fight over the future. Key points. The U.S. Army fell short of its 2022 recruitment goal by 25% and recently cuts its projection for its total force this year by 10 Thousand. That's 10,000 lives that will not be wasted on these for-profit wars. Thank God, U.S. Secretary of the Army Christine Warmoth said at the CBC, CNBC's work summit on Wednesday that it become harder for the military to compete for recruits. Sergeant Stripe says, social media and influencers key to military recruitment of young people, defense people. Defense officials say. The Israeli apartheid regime also uses sexualized propaganda to whitewash its fascist genocidal military. This is what Israelis are subject to. So that's basically what they're subject to. So they're like, hey, look, don't think with your head, think with your head. And come on over and risk your life for the military industrial complex. Let's do that. Huh? Yo, especially especially to my young Straight and bisexual men. Listen, come come to the camera. Young men, especially you young cis men, come to the camera. Hold up, hold up. Actually, no, fuck it. Light. We need light. We need light in here. Y'all need to open your eyes and stop looking at them. Because guess what? They're going to get your ass killed. They're going to get you killed. They're going to get you killed. They're trying, literally trying to lure you in so that you fight the wars for the military industrial complex so that they get more money. And then what do you gain? You gain PTSD. You gain maybe lost limbs. You gain lost brothers or family members in the military, you may also gain homelessness. You may also gain strained relationships with your families. They're not worth it. Do not fall for them. I know, I know, I know they're, they're pretty, they're very pretty. But guess what? All things that glitter ain't gold, baby. Don't do it. Don't. <sighs> Young man, y'all, y'all just, y'all can't, y'all can't. Mm -mm. Hold on. Yeah. Roger says, sounds like it's military is the first for one thirsty for recruits. Mm hmm. Yep. Reality Revolution says, hey, can't stay, but make sure to virtual signal with a like and share. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Reality. Good to see you. Yeah. Let me enlarge. Let's go back. Look, just because I'm gay don't mean I got, ain't got eyes. I got eyes, right? But guess what? <laughs> Not dying from war is a lot more attractive. Trust me. It says, what makes this even more grotesque is that there are systemic rape cases 
and the U.S. military, which is covered up. And they are actively making propaganda that encourages and further normalizes sexual assault and mass rape. This is one of the major points. Sexual assault is a major issue in the military. And particularly a lot of women, some men, but a lot of women can tell you that this is a problem. And so luring young men in this way also exacerbates the problem. Mind you, that the sexual assault issue in the U.S. military is quite indicative of the U.S. foreign policy in other nations. Because when other nations say no, the United States doesn't know what no means. They'll go into other countries and then they will pillage them for their resources and extract their resources out from them even though the citizens of that country say no. So even the United States, by their foreign policy, to them, they don't know what no means. No means no, but the United States, when it comes to their foreign policy, doesn't know what no means. So guess what? They do the same thing. So guess what? They really don't give a shit whether it happens in their military that much. So I say this to everybody. Stay out. Not your war, not your monkey, not your circus. Stay out. In fact, if you're going to do something for your country, was it February 19th, I think it is? There's there's a rally, there's an anti-war rally going on in Washington, D.C. Instead, instead of going to these people, go to the anti-war rallies. Go to the anti-war rallies. What is it? Uh, Rage Against the War Machine rally. Go to that. Go to the Assange rallies. Go to the Healthcare for All rallies. Join the you know organizations that are anti-war. Join organizations that are like, for instance, the PSL, Socialist Alternative, ones like that. Sama Sawant is starting a new organization. Go to that. But do not, do not join these ones. You're in for a lot of heartache, no matter your gender. I'm telling you. The screenshot says a poison in the system, the epidemic of military sexual assault. This is real stuff, people. Sexual assaults on female troops reached highest level in more than a decade. Do you really think the U.S. military gives a shit about women? As well, Zay Squirrel continues, while Israel uses women to whitewash their genocidal apartheid regime, it actively engages in and covers up the mass rape and sexual assault of Palestinian and Ukrainian girls and women, as detailed in this thread. The reality of relit. These are the young men you guys need to listen to. And I've seen this before. And let's go again. These are the young men y'all need to listen to. Hey, Omar, if you could say one thing to your recruiter, what would it be? Fuck you. Hey, word. <clears throat> word, 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 word. Yeah. If you could say one thing to your recruiter, what would it be? That was fucking bullshit. <laughs> hey. uh -huh. If you could tell one thing to your recruiter, what would it be? Fuck you. If you could say one thing to your recruiter, what would it be? I hope he dies. Hey, if you could say one thing to your recruiter, what would it be? Why the fuck did you lie to me? If you could say one thing to your recruiter, what would it be? Thank you very much for the job opportunity. <laughs> hey, Frost. If What's you could up? say one thing to your recruiter, what would it be? Why didn't you tell me about Airborne? <laughs> Pinkton, if you could say one thing to your recruiter, what would it be? Good. Hey, if you could say one thing to your recruiter, what would it be? <laughs> Thanks. If you could say one thing to your recruiter, what would it be? Fuck you. If you could say one thing to your recruiter, what would it be? You're welcome for my service. <laughs> yeah. Why would they be saying that? Because they were lied to.
And yeah, the first person was an army psyop unit. And once again, <laughs> to the young man, wake up. How about a motherfucking monk pack? We got a beef pack. <laughs> Santa Fe, right? Wake up. Wake up. It's propaganda. It's propaganda. It's an e-girl in military uniform. It's propaganda. Wake up. Wake up. Wake up. How about a motherfucker? See, the guy's saying it's propaganda. Shout out to, shout out to you, man. Shout out to you. Good job. Good job. Because we, number one, we got to protect, we got to protect our kids. By our kids, I mean of all genders. I'm just talking about, I'm talking about our men, women, everybody in between. We got to protect them. We got to protect them from the military industrial complex. And that's what we have to do. Because if we don't, guess what? They're going to die, whether physically or mentally and emotionally. We don't want any damage to come to them. So, yeah. Yeah, so uh, it's just, it, it's crazy, man, you know, how they're using sex basically to sell propaganda. And it, it's sad, but, I mean, this is why we need to, you know, increase our our volume of our voice when it talks about the military industrial complex and what they do. Thanks for the tip on Rockfin. Roger says, our military are the enforcers of corporations. Replace the corporations with co-ops. Then, if another country has something that we can use, co-op members will be in the room to discuss trade deals to use leverage so other countries can adopt the co-op model. So, cut the middleman out of the way so people of one country will actually be dealing directly with people of another country to do fair trade fair trade yep thank you for that roger appreciate it Lavender Rose says capitalism does not ha have anything better to exploit except human bodies. Of course, they will pimp out young female recruits to feed the war machine. No surprises there. Yep. Red says good video. Oh, God Catcher says I've seen this exact video. <laughs> Funny. Oh, man. Wait. One says, I'm not re-enlisting. Never. I did not join out of necessity, but rather to put a desire to learn this institution from within. Interesting. I'm sure you learned a lot. Hmm. Oh, uh, yes. I will put the link to this thread in the zit chat. And I'll put it in the rough in chat too. All right. Okay. Creative experiment says military recruiters are at every public event now. Yeah, unfortunately. Do you have segments about how the gaming industry lures vulnerable young kids? 
actually, I talked about that back in 2021 with someone. Um, I forgot his Twitter handle. But yeah, I talked to someone about that. And in fact, one of the people who actually was helping recruit people and recruiting people to more right-wing politics too was Steve Bannon. We actually had a discussion about that on the channel. It is here, is on the JB show. If you go to the playlists and then go to the JB show, it's like way back in my early JB show days, back in the beginning of RBN, before we were RBN, we were Fred Hampton leftists, and we actually and I actually talked about that with R- Refuse Raccoon, I think his name was, and we actually talked about um, the gaming industry and how it lures young people, especially young men, and they'll be on Twitch luring young men through games like Call of Duty in order to bring them more into the military. So they actually did that too. But now they're like, okay, so we can't get them through gaming like we want. All right, let's get them through sex. And that's how they do it. But yes, I I have talked about it. I should talk about it again, though. Mario, Mario I. Vargas says, I went to Los Angeles Comic Con and guess who had their own booth? The Marines and the Navy. Why in the hell would the Marines and the Navy need a booth at Comic Con? Golly, these people are shameless. Yes, Sebastiano, make Earth a better place for all the children of the world. Absolutely. Stephen Miles Cook says the U.S. government has been using sex to sell war since at least World War I in a modern sense. Hollywood and all the entertainment industry has been recruited throughout the decade since. Watch, they're going to come after us gays. And guess what? They're going to show a whole bunch of shoulders. Oh, shoulders. <laughs> They're gonna ho- so a whole bunch of soldiers with their shirts off, trying to get recruit some more women and those of us gays in the military. They're gonna try to recruit us more. Watch, we ain't falling for it either. Mm-mm. <laughs> what he? <laughs> what he said, when VR really starts to take off, watch out. From hide your kids, hide your wife, to close your eyes, save your life. <laughs> I love it. Oh, what he is funny. Okay. Um, Mark said, thank you for so much for this super chat. Says, 20 years ago. I was right wing. Over the years, I have wandered more and more to the left. And now I am here with RBN, learning so much every stream. By the way, did you like the stream? Not just you, Mark, but everybody. All y'all. Did y'all like the stream? The spirit of CJ is upon us. Let him smile with, with, with upon you. All right. Savvy Bites says, work of Mike P- uh, Preisner, excellent on this topic. Oh, okay. Thank you so much. So, yeah. So, this is what's happening. And we got to protect our people, our young people, from the military industrial complex because they are literally trying to, to do damage. I wanted to show this also really quick um, because it saddens me. This goes back to the whole housing issue. 
and I should have talked about this when we were talking about housing, but I really wanted to get to that second story. But you'd be surprised at what people, how people respond to housing. When you talk about housing first, some people really get mean and they get hateful, to be honest with you. So I responded to a Prager you treat tweet says, what should we do about homelessness? Now, you know that they are not genuinely asking this question. They just basically want an opportunity to let their people who follow them to trash homelessness. And unfortunately, since Elon decided to take over Twitter, I've been seeing a lot more Prager U tweets. So guess what? I've been responding with my thoughts as a socialist. What should we do about homelessness? I said, give people homes. Housing first models work in, in homelessness. Come people came in and then said what they said and i said it's sad how people reject humanity of housing all for all because they feel housing isn't a right 40 percent of the homeless work so what do you say to them also if they have mental issues is this how we choose to treat people with mental illness and i said just open your mind for just a second if anything it's a way to see how we can have a more compassionate and kinder society you're not opposed to that are you and then I posted a video from Second Thought. The video is how Finland ended homelessness. This person says, my mind is open. I think it gets dicey when we start talking about specifics. Will the housing be in every neighborhood? Yes. Are there rules to be allowed to stay? What rules? I mean, any rules that you would have in your own house? If we build enough housing, will people be banned from public loitering? What are you talking about? Too many, the answers are everything. The thing is, is that people just deserve housing. Why should we have a bunch of, why should we have a bunch of rules attached to it? This person says, bad idea on so many levels, didn't explain. Over commander said, so simple too, having a homeless problem, give them homes. And these guys act like political scientists, exactly. That's why I had to like it. This person says handouts have never once permanently helped anyone. I beg to differ. It's helping me. Uh, hand up works, but first they have to be persuaded to accept a hand up and work. 40% of them work, and then the rest have fell upon hard times. And even then, housing is a right. But you don't believe that housing is right. It says so. First, we must apply civil commitment procedures to force participation. To force participation. To force participation. Forcing people down, and compliance, and compliance, and plans to supervise and care for the most of them for life. Force participation and compliance. Force. How, see, see what that person said. Not just homes if they got nothing to do. Who cares if they got nothing to do? They deserve housing regardless. Nobody advances without work. Well, <laughs> this is a complex issue. You just have the simplest answer possible. Your response requires zero thought or research into the process. That's what a kindergartner would say. Just give them houses. I put in a housing first model from a study that was done. Boom. Nope, there it is. This doesn't work for drug addictions. 90% of homeless are drug and alcohol addicts. Says who? Says who? And, and by the way, if we're going to talk about drug and alcohol addiction among people, damn near everybody in this country is drug and alcohol addicted in some way, shape, or form. How many people right now are in a line at a Starbucks? How many people? Caffeine is a drug, people. How many people you see at bars? Alcohol is a drug. So you want to talk about alcohol and drug addiction? 
There are people with homes that have alcohol and drugs addictions. That's not the point. Who cares if they have an alcohol or drug addiction? Number one, they should be getting treatment anyway. Because alcohol and drug addictions, guess what? It is a thing that we should really take care of in this country. But why do people have these alcohol and drug addictions? Maybe, just maybe, it could be because they don't have a house. Maybe because they don't have a home. Maybe because they're suffering under a capitalist system. And so they feel they have the need to self-medicate in order for this to happen. Maybe, just maybe, that might be the underlying cause. But this person, Andrew underscore just, thinks, oh, well, you, you, you can't do it because they have alcohol and drug addictions. Guess what? Your mama got alcohol and drug addictions. Does she drink coffee every single morning? Guess what? She's addicted to addicted to drugs. So what? So what? Humans have been consuming drugs for thousands of years. So what? We have been doing mind-altering substances all our entire existence. Guess what? <laughs> we still deserve housing. Golly, people are just so unempathetic. Tom Ryan says this has already been multiple times and it failed every single time. Uh, did you look up the uh, up in the thread when I actually talked about how Finland is actually succeeding at doing it? Also, while we're at it, how much homelessness appears and happens in Cuba? What about China? What about DPRK? Huh? What about them? Have you actually, you actually talked to somebody who actually lives here and talks about homelessness? This person, condescending as hell, Toki Murray, yeah, I'm calling out names, says, sweetie, it sounds like a good idea, but it really doesn't fix the issue. It could work for some that fall into hard times, but for most, it just makes the problem worse. I said 40% of people, homeless people have jobs. What do you say to them? Person says the troll progressive. This person is supposed to be a progressive. Says, can you stop with the oversimplified statement? It doesn't actually address the problem. If you give people homes, then there's no more homelessness. What is there to what is there to oversimplify? Like y'all overcomplicate issues so much. Propaganda got y'all by the balls. I'm telling you. Actually, detail how this works. What are the actual steps? How do you pay for it? How do you make it sustainable? Detail this all the time. But as the left, we must do better. I put in links. Links. Mr. Progressive. Like, holy shit. Are you kidding me right now, bro? What happens if you give a home to a person who's mentally ill or a druggie? You know how many mentally ill people actually have homes? Do you know how many people who do drugs have homes? I can't tell you how many people in upper executive positions get on that twinkle twinkle on a typical basis in their offices. I can't tell you how many executives go to the boom boom rooms at strip joints and they got a mirror with, you know, with a couple credit cards and some lines ready to sniff up. You don't ask about whether they should have housing or not, and yet you're ready to question somebody who fell on hard times, whether they should have housing or not, just because they have a mental illness or a drug addiction, a substance abuse addiction. So, yeah, that was all from yesterday, by the way. So, yes, here's the thing. When it comes to housing, it's really not that difficult. The thing is that the capitalist system makes it seem more difficult because they don't want everybody to actually have a standard of living, a, 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 a foundation. They don't want it because then if that's the case, then that means the people who have the most won't have the most. 
So that's what it is. We need housing first. And my question is, what damage to you would it be if we gave everybody housing? How would that hurt you? Please explain. How would that hurt you if you have housing? If they, if somebody who's poor and broke and on the street has housing, how how does that how does that hurt you? It's funny when it comes to actually displaying compassion. It's like, no, we can't do that. Pro like my ass cheeks. You want to be pro life? Give everybody housing. You want to be pro life? Then guess what? Give everybody health care. Let's nationalize it. You want to be pro life? Let's slash the military budget by 95%. And let's uh, rerouting all that money to schools, to housing, to education, to food. You want to be pro-life? Let's defund the police. Savvy's going to be on at 4 o'clock on her channel. Make sure you guys get to there. But she's going to be talking about Cop City. Guess what? Let's slash that. Let's get rid of that. That's pro-life. The fuck? You guys want to talk about pro-life? Let's make ourselves, let's get it so that we can have a nationalized healthcare system so that people who are trans can actually transition the way they need to to be themselves. Because no, because studies show that when trans people actually are able to transition to be who they truly are, their mental health actually improves so that they don't commit rates of suicide. That's the pro-life position. Saving our trans brothers and sisters. That's pro-life. What? You got fucking Ron DeSantis out here wanting to make... He went from don't say gay to don't say black. And you guys want to talk about your pro-life. Get the fuck out of here. Pro-life. Bullshit. Bullshit. And don't you Democrats come in and say, oh, well, we were... No, 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 no. Because you guys are the same ones that are also allowing the Republicans to do exactly what the fuck they've been doing. You, Jamal Bowman, getting getting money from the National Association of Realtors talking about the rent is too damn high. And then you want to you wanna take money from them while they're literally making the rent too damn high? Get the fuck out of here. With your... What? You're posturing. This is what we talk about. This is why we say leave both parties. Leave both parties. Leave them. Get out. Sorry, I just. No, yeah, man. What? You, no, yeah. I'm not having it today, man. Because people, people, people want to talk about other oh, compassionate bullshit, man. Bullshit. It's not compassion. It's greed. My housing values. Who gives a fuck about your housing values? You have a home. You literally have a home. Let's start decommodifying shit. And just make sure that everybody has housing, everybody has food, everybody has health care. Y'all look, y'all look all screwy eyed and look side eyed at people to go get a second plate at the cookout when not everybody's gotten their first plate. Y'all look all side eyed at them, but then y'all are willing to get a second house, to buy a second house, to flip a second house when not everybody has a house. Where is your humanity? Where is it? I'm the 
know what it's like to be homeless. And they're the same people who say shit about homeless people. They don't want to talk about the amount of kids, kids that are LGBTQ plus that are kicked out of their homes day in and day out. And they have to survive on the streets out there because they are homeless because their parents or their families rejected them based on their gender identity or their sexual orientation. You want to talk about pro-life. Tell me about pro-life. Tell me. Tell those kids out there that literally have to go and start selling their bodies in order to be able to survive. By the way, I'm also for sex workers, but I don't like sex work under duress, where that's you feel like that's the only way that you can survive. I don't feel like sex work should be under duress, which means we should have a level playing field so that everybody has housing, healthcare, food, things like that. But if you still want to do sex work, I'm cool with that. Mwah. Love you. But to these kids out here in the streets, pro-life and don't you people who are democratic apologists come to me either because you may say oh well love is love but is your love love because you guys will sit here and support somebody like jamal bowman and yet he's taking money from people that don't want us to have housing for all because housing for all would literally mean that people who are LGBTQ that are kicked out of their houses will actually have a place to live. Where does your heart lie? That's why I get angry. That's why I get upset, right? Because I see the virtue signaling happening often from people of both parties because they'll say that they care about either the lives of people because they're pro-life, but they don't really display it, or they'll say black lives matter or love is love without actually displaying Black lives actually mattering or love is love. That's why, that's why I get upset. That's why I'm not in these two parties. And that's why I will promote to lead both parties and actually start to read shit. Go do it. Read. And also, make friends with, with, with people of disenfranchised groups. Make friends with people who are disabled. Make friends with people who are Black. Make friends with people who are Latino. Make friends with people who are Asian. Make friends with people who are in disenfranchised groups. Make friends with trans people. Make friends with gay people. Make friends with poor white people. Make friends with people who are disenfranchised among you. Because guess what? Then you will learn and you start to apply that empathy, you'll finally know why we feel the way we feel. I gotta get going, cause I, I'm over time, but I just wanna thank you all. If you guys have not liked the stream, please make sure to like the stream. Thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, make sure to go to Savvy. She starts in about 40 minutes from now on her channel. So go all 109 of y'all, go over to Savvy's channel and watch her. Um, and also I'm not sure if CJ's doing a show today, but if CJ's doing a show today, then keep an eye on RBN, go to, go to our sub stack. You'll be alerted for when we go live, things like that. Also, thank you to the patrons on Patreon for your contributions and anyone that sends me contributions via various mutual aids. I appreciate that as well. Be sure to be here on my channel, on the JB font channel on this Tuesday at two, I will be covering a couple of stories. And then also at 3 p.m. on my channel, I will have Conrad Misty on. We will be talking about the event, the end of, in, um, oh gosh, 
rage against the war machine rally all you know as well as we're talking about some things about assange as well as some other news stories as well i'll be talking with her so i can't wait to have her on my channel that would be a great discussion and then we have rbn live this tuesday at four so I, hopefully i'll be able to see you guys there i will also be getting into the next reading of asada shakur shortly so you guys can stay tuned for that on my channel thank you so very much everybody uh roger i see you thank you for letting me know before I dip out, hang on. Uh, got you. Okay, let me. Get here. Just before I go. Roger says, JB, look at what they're telling you. Not as glass half empty, but glass half full. It <laughs> full of it. It sounds like these people are criticizing are in favor of public bank, government jobs guarantee, seeing they want people to work and wish to end homelessness crisis. Like I said, North Dakota is 51 and homelessness per capita. Also, big business and Wall Streeters get handouts all the time with no means testing. Punch up, not down. Very good. Perfect. Perfect, Roger. Thank you so much. Shout out to Dave Burt. Thank you. Um, says Roger, you got to just as recommendation here, complexify or prepare some other speeches for people on parts of public bank. We need like seven versions of the benefits of public bank speech. I think Dave is saying basically uh, say it louder for the people in the back. <laughs> With the emphasis on how public banks established in a good way and around the current legislators, which are wholly corrupt. That's heavy corruption there. You see the legislators under Citizen United and Patriot. Okay, thank you so very much. Um, also, I got a super chat. Um, you see, thank you, Pablo, for you should read up on Operation Move. Operation Move. Okay. Operation move. Let me Oh yeah, I heard about that. Yeah. The bombing in Philly. Yeah. I should ask my uh, my family in West Philly about that because they they've been living they lived in West Philly for gosh since the early 1900s so yeah anyway so yeah I'm gonna get going because number one our brother's hungry number two I'm making pancakes for dinner that's gonna be great uh, so thank you everyone my forehead kisses to every single one of you actually let me get to a couple of these really quick before. I, Love you too, Sweary Fairy. Yeah, I'm going to try to do some self-care. Uh, Wadi says, actually, you've probably not. There's like, okay. All right. You know what? You just reminded me of something. It's not hopeless for Lavender Rose. And I'm going to tell you why. Because there are people like you that exist. It's not hopeless. And don't you think that it is? Because people like you exist. I still have hope in humanity because of you. Because of all y'all, I still have hope in humanity. And let me share some... Oh, by the way, before I go, I always... I, I made a mental note of this. Let me see. Uh, let's see. I want to share a couple of sites with you guys first before I go. Um, so I'm going to share a couple of websites with you guys. You guys want to help people out with housing? Here's here's how you can do it. Okay, I'm going to share a couple of links in the chat. There's Strive Pensacola. Strive Pensacola 
is a community organization that actually helps people, especially people who are trans, to find housing. Stride Pensacola is a great, and I've had reps from Stride Pensacola on the on the um, on the activist summit as well as on my channel. I have had Indigo let on from Stride Pensacola. Um, so there's that. So let me show you guys Stride Pensacola. Uh, sorry, I'm going a little bit over, but. I, I really need to show this because the thing is we talk about the problems a lot and a lot of times people are like, well, what are the solutions? Here's one solution that we can work towards. Here's Strive Pensacola fighting for transgender liberation. Uh, and so they serve uh, transgender people in Northwest Florida. So they also, and then you can also donate to Strive Pensacola because they also put people queer people as well as transgender people who are suffering from housing insecurity, they put them in housing. So that is what you guys can do. Also, there's another one. And this is what Nick is part of, Nick of RBN. KC Tenants. You guys can also donate to KC Tenants as well because they are also helping people with tenants issues in Kansas City. Kansas City also needs help. So guess what? There are solutions to these issues. The thing is, is that I want to make sure that I bring this to you guys. Go to Casey Tenants and go to Strive Pensacola so you guys can actually help out people who are in need of housing. Just because we have these issues that people say, and then they talk about, oh, well, we can't give housing for all because of blah, blah, blah. Yes, we can. And there are organizations that are dedicated to helping people out. Stride Pensacola is also a socialist organization as well. So there you go. Just wanted to put that out there before I go because I wanted to shout out some love to KC Tenants and Stride Pensacola. And to go let, if you're watching, love your fam, love all the work that you're doing. Now, I'm about to go. Forehead kisses to every single one of you. Wash your pants, water yourselves, leave the world better than you found it, and housing for all. Because the rent is too damn high.